We are going to discuss a very interesting topic, uh, valuation methods and cost of capital. These are two topics. First, we will see how we value the stock and what is the concept of options and derivative. And in the last, we will discuss how we calculate the cost of capital for the existing business. And if you are a new business, then we will calculate your cost of capital. Let's start our discussion. In the previous lecture, uh, you discuss what is a bond, what is an equity, what is a preference share, what is an ordinary share. So in continuation of that discussion, we will continue. If the preferred dividend rate is less than what is prevalent in the market, then the preferred stock will sell at less than its par value. We have some uh, technical terms. One is called par value, face value, or a legal value. When we issue a share, it has some legal value, uh, which is we record in accounting books also. Uh, but when we go to a uh, trading, so the market value comes from the market that is external to our books. So if people are very much interested to buy our bonds shares and market, uh, we have a good reputation in market. So maybe my $10 share will be sold in $20. So this $10 extra is called premium and opposite this is called discount if if i have no much reputation there is no market share i float one preferred share or a bond so market is not much positive so how to attract them to buy a ten dollar stuff i will say okay buy it in seven dollar worth ten dollar so i am giving them discount so these are two phenomenal uh, stuff in our uh, fund or bond or equity markets this is what he said a dividend rate higher than the market average will result in a preferred stock selling at a premium and vice versa means discount because uh, we are going to be CMAs and if our company is uh, into share stock, it's a listed or public limited company, then we will frequently deal with preference stock, ordinary stock, bonds. So this is one of the very important factor that what dividend means return to the shareholders we are giving. So are we giving every year a steady uh, same amount, it is growing or sometimes it is too high, sometimes it's too low because if we will not give a proper dividend to the shareholders, they may pull out their money from our company. So uh, dividend policies are really, really important and that's why we calculate constant growth dividend discount model. How it works? We take dividend per share, we divide by discount rate and dividend growth rate. For example, if your discount rate is 12 and your dividend growth rate is 5%, so this is how we'll put the plug the figures and get the constant dividend uh, discount model that also called as dividend growth model is a method of arriving at the value of stock by using expected dividend per share which is here discounting them back to the present values the formula is as I told you moving forward he says that uh, we do have another formula expected dividend is equal to last annual dividend paid into 1 plus growth rate into T. T can be a year, it can be a month, it can be a quarter based on the time. So we can see what is the expected dividend because if I'm a shareholder, uh, it's very important for me to know from your company that what dividend you are going to give me because if it is not good, then I should pull my investment and do investment there where I am getting a better return out of my investment. So he says there are two uh, stage dividend discount models and there, there are three uh, steps to calculate them. First what we do is we calculate the sum of present value of dividend in the period of high growth. Because suppose 
you know, in America, we faced a recession 2007. But before that, there was a big market. So when your market was going fine, so company was getting returns, profits, and they were returning dividends so high to the shareholders. But then market crashed, right? So we take the growth in high uh, best times, then we take in a steady growth, means when the growth is a little bit smooth and steady, one is high, and then we take the, uh, when we add the sum the total calculated in step one and two. So these three steps will let us know that what is the, uh, the dividend discount, uh, growth by dividend discount model. What is present value? This is important. This is later in some chapters we'll discuss present value, future value, discount rates. Today one dollar is one dollar. So today is we called as spot value and present value. Future value is suppose a, a banker comes to you. He says, I have one million dollar. I want to invest. Would you like to invest with us? In five years, I will give you five million dollars. So it feels very attractive and we are always, you know, money is multiplying hugely. But I have to see that after five years, what will be the price of the dollar? What will be the inflation? What will be, can I buy something in five million? Because see, today, uh, you cannot buy a studio flat in 1 million dirham in marina maybe. But maybe 30 years before you can buy a big piece of land because there was a desert. Right? So money loses its value with the passage of time. And other factor like inflation and other changes also keep going. So we calculate, we don't, we don't just get attracted that we will get 5 million. We calculate that this 5 million worth as of today what? Yeah. So we can compare that this investment is worth it or not. So this is the concept of calculate the present value. You need some amount and you need to multiply with a discount factor. Discount factor depend on the, uh, the econom economy and economic situation of the country, inflation level and employment levels. And generally it is given in the questions for our CMA exams. We can calculate the preferred stock uh, by a fixed dividend, dividend per share divided by cost of capital. So dividend per, per share, from where we will get the dividend per share? We need to have a number of shares and we have to get the amount of the dividend. So dividend per share will come. And we will divide it with the cost of capital. Cost of capital we are going to discuss shortly that what is the actual concept of cost of capital. I will explain as the topic comes. We do have some other ratios to calculate. We want to see what is the market price of the share versus earning before interest tax depreciation allowance. Because if you compare two companies, one company has interest and other company don't have interest. So both will give you a different analysis. That's why we take earning before interest and tax. That will be somehow is comparable with two companies. So earning, so what is the formula? Market price per share divided by EBITDA per share. Both are per shares and it will tell you the, it will reflect the stock market positive assessment of the firm generation of the profit through ongoing operations. Yeah, so this is I already explained that if you are comparing a company with having a debt structure, I mean they have loans, or if you have a company without debt structure, so that will be a different way to analyze. 
any investment banker answer to this problem to compare simply the operating earnings before deducting non cash expenses so this is a short formula to uh, if you want to compare debt versus non debt so you can take simply the earning before deducting the non cash expenses what are non cash